Carly Simon, Anticipation, right here, Dan Radio Style. Hope everybody out there is having themselves a great day, as always. All right, nothing happens fast enough. I think that's what I'm going to call this. It's either that or uh, we want things to happen too quickly, but I'm kind of leaning towards the, the one I just said. All right, so this has kind of been coming up a lot lately, and I've been kind of wondering about it, and I certainly think there's a generational side to this. So we're going to try to cover this from a couple different sides, and really this is more, I think, meant to give us a little extra information for ourselves. So when we start to look at the timing of things, when we start to look at things and go, ah, it's not happening quick enough. One, I've talked about how everything's a process, right? Processes have to happen over time. That's just the way processes play out, right? This has to happen, then this has to happen, then this has to happen, then this has to happen. And you can't make those things happen every millisecond, right? Because sometimes it requires uh, learning a lesson, right? Sometimes it requires figuring something out that you didn't know. Sometimes it requires seeing a pattern in your behavior. And once you're able to identify that, then things can start to happen that'll open up other doors, right? But a lot of these things depend on us, first off, and oftentimes depend on the third party, right? Some sort of outside person. They have their aspects. I know a lot of there's this us pushed out. I don't, when it comes to other people living their own lives, I don't think that's us pushed out. That's their own life. They're living their own life. When it comes to me projecting stuff onto someone, without a doubt, us pushed out. But everyone has their own lives. So the fact that so-and-so's maybe in a relationship right now, that's not you pushed out. That's him in a relationship. That, that's what that is. Now, you being fearful, you being scared, you assuming he doesn't like you, you thinking you're not good enough, you although that's us pushed out. Those are really solid examples of when we project our fears onto someone else. And that, to me, is what us pushed out is. Again, I'm going to do a show on this, but... And it's kind of not totally on topic, but again, there's aspects to everything, to the timing, to what makes things happen. So one of the things that's really popped into my head, and there's, I think, kind of two different breaking points, if you will, uh, or places where I think things started to kind of speed up in society and thusly has created this sort of uh, issue with time for a lot of us where it just seems like nothing happens fast enough, right? And I'm not going to get into crazier things. I'm going to keep it kind of on the very three-dimensional. Here's the world we live in. Here's a lot of the studies that have been done. Now, prior to the inventions, frankly, of microwaves, I want to be starting with the, the kind of the my generation, basically. I call us a microwave society. If I can't have it in three minutes or less, I don't want it. And I really started pushing this when I used to work for uh, Turd Bucks Coffee, and um, they, we had customers, literally, if I had to rebrew coffee, they'd be like, I don't have five minutes to wait, which I get, I get if you don't have five minutes, but like it really started to trip me out a little bit, and like, how do these people get through life and not actually have any extra time whatsoever built into their schedules so they can uh, deal with a cup of coffee, maybe traffic, right? Like, but anyway, Call us a microwave society. If we can't have it in three minutes or less, I don't want it. That's my generation because I very much grew up. Microwaves were a part of my life, right? But we used to go out and play. We used to find things to entertain ourselves. So my concept of fast is not necessarily what it's become today. And I would say anyone that's probably under 35, 30, 35, somewhere around there, internet and computers have been a part of your whole life. I mean, back when I was born... We did sort of have computers. They were starting to finally microdize. They were smaller. They weren't like taking up gymnasiums like the ENIAC, like the first computer, the first supercomputer. But supercomputers were huge. Mainframes were huge. These were giant computers that we don't have anymore. There's not mainframes really anymore. I mean, maybe in some old places that are using really old stuff. But for the most part, you, you can take a regular PC and link about 12 of them together. And now you got basically a supercomputer, right? And yes, they do still have supercomputers. But again, things are happening so fast now because we can find out anything we want. Any information we want out there, we can definitely figure out, you know, like instant, right? Instant. And there was a study that was done, and I thought this was very interesting, by this guy at the UMass Amherst. Uh, he's a science professor, computer science professor out there. And he was examining the viewing habits of 6.7 million internet users. 6.7 million 
internet users. And really the question was, how willing are people to be patient? And what they were testing was the speed at which a web page loads, right? How, how, how long does it take to load the web page? And if it takes longer than X number of seconds or X number of milliseconds, do we lose people? Do people basically just go, screw it, I'm not waiting for this thing. What they found is that at two seconds is when people started to fall off. After they, that's when they started abandoning. Once you hit five seconds, the abandonment rate was 25%. Once you hit 10 seconds, 50% of the people were gone. 50% of 6.7 million people were gone. 10 seconds, too long to wait. Now, I admit, 10 seconds, especially if I just sat here silent for 10 seconds, is a ridiculously long time. No question in my mind. But what I want you to understand is this has conditioned many of us mentally. Many of us expect things to happen. We expect that gratification instantly. We expect that immediate dopamine hit. And that is not how manifestation works. That is not how really anything of any long-term benefit to you works, right? If you're looking at working out and working your physical body, working out is something you do for years and months and months and, for, you know, for for eons. You don't just go to the gym and put in a 30-minute workout and then walk, walk away ripped. That's not how it works. It doesn't work that way. Relationships are the same way. You invest time, energy, love, emotion, all these things. You invest into the relationship to help build them up. So one of the things I'm hoping to come from this is giving you that understanding. It's like, yeah, I guess that is true. Like, I just... Generally speaking, I'm so used to things happen happening quickly in my life that the idea of waiting a month or two or three to manifest my specific person or to manifest whatever it is I'm trying to manifest, like why waiting a little while is one, acceptable, two, understandable, and three, something that hopefully when you are armed with this information allows your patience to be a hair stronger than maybe it was. Because no matter what, it is going to take time. Now, a couple practices that I think kind of help, and at the same time, I think are why some people have a hard time doing them. But these are things that will actually help you get to a place where waiting isn't necessarily as difficult, or at least you can practice getting better at it. Meditation is a great one. Sitting still, sitting quietly, sitting in a place where you're just kind of receiving or letting thoughts come and go, letting things pass through you for five minutes, 10 minutes, can feel like an eternity for someone that's not used to waiting at all. So it's good practice because one, it teaches you to quiet your mind, teaches you to kind of just let thoughts come and go, gives you a moment to be able to kind of just relax be with yourself, feel your own energy, see the thoughts flow through you. And sometimes it, like what I'll do even too is this is where I'll do some of my gratitude or gratitude and <laughs> gratitude where I'll do some of my gratitude thoughts and feelings and really in the, from the state of meditation I feel an amazing amount of energy that usually comes in through the heart, right? And the heart chakra as they talk about and it kind of just starts to expand through the body and it feels amazing. So meditation is a great way to kind of help you practice dealing with the fact that it takes time. Another great one is reading. Reading an actual book. I guess an ebook, if you're actually flipping pages, still counts because you're technically reading. Not when you listen to words on tape. And there's nothing wrong if you do that. There's no criticisms whatsoever. What I'm talking about is the act of reading itself. Reading is a way to kind of help teach you that things take time, that things progress right? When you're at a movie, you don't notice that time is progressing because you're enthralled, you're into it. It's, it's an illusion and you're very much a part of it and it's just happening and you're not really aware of time. When you're reading, you kind of can be because you're going through and then you're flipping a page and like you're noticing time's passing, your mind kind of maybe wanders once in a while. Like These kinds of things will come and, and, and make it difficult. So again, another way to kind of help kind of get you into that place. And, and one other thing I kind of want to mention for all of us that really don't feel like things are happening quick enough 
And I've talked about this before, and I think I still think it's an amazing example. If you were to have a child, and this is definitely um, for anyone that's thought of children, or certainly anyone that's got children, if you were to take your child, right, and they pop out, boom, right, they're out, they're out, in, they're out in the wild, they're out in the world, and you basically hand them to someone, and they walk out of the room, and then in walks in an 18-year-old and says, hi, mom, thanks, appreciate it, instant, you got, your child's gone all the way through everything, instantly, great, great, so that's fantastic, right, isn't that great, isn't that what really what you're after when you have a child, is the, uh, you just want to see them grow up, you want to make sure that they're able to take care of themselves, and once that's happened, you're fine, or is it the process, is it the experience, is it them growing up? Them stubbing their toe for the first time. Them riding without training wheels for their first time. Their first base hit in baseball. Their first goal in soccer or football. Isn't it the experience that we're after? The same is true with relationships. The same is true with manifesting a job. It's the process that's actually what matters. I know we talk about this all the time, but... In the context of time, you really need to kind of step back for a second and go, oh, yeah, you're kind of right. It really is the process. That's what we take away from it. It's not the end result that ultimately matters. Really, from our soul level, it's not the end result that matters. From your soul level, the fact that you manifested your specific person is not really what's key. What's key is you learn to control your thoughts. You learn to kind of control or at least pay attention to your emotions. You learned to not be pushing anger and these kinds of things out to the people we care about. You've learned to kind of heal aspects within your own self, right? All these things are part of the process. And frankly, all those things are far more important than just manifesting your SP. Not nearly as important. The experiences you have with your SP, yes, super important. Manifesting your SP, bah, Nothing. Doesn't matter. That really doesn't matter. It's what you did to get to that place that's amazing. And then it's what you do after that place that matters. The actual manifestation doesn't matter. It is so insignificant in importance to what you're working on internally. Controlling your thoughts. Controlling your emotions. Contro- or, or, or at least guiding them intentionally. You can't really control them maybe sometimes. You can control your thoughts for sure and you can guide your thoughts for sure and when you guide your thoughts, your emotions tend to come with it. So again, it's that process. So would we want to rush our child right through their their whole adulthood? Or even better, how about the relationship? For those of us that don't think about kids all that much, how about in a relationship, how about you meet your person like face to face, you meet them, and then they walk away, and then they come back to you, and they're 20 years older, and they thank you for an amazing relationship. Thanks for everything. Ah, oh, it was amazing. Such an awesome relationship. Thank you. Whoa, wait, whoa. I didn't, I didn't get to experience any of that 20 years. Ah, I know, but it was wonderful. Just trust me. It was really good. Really, really good. You would have loved it had you have been there and experienced it. Things take time. Anything worth anything takes a little bit of time to manifest, to grow, to whatever, to blossom. I mean, nature doesn't grow overnight, right? Uh, With the exception of like one weird cactus or something that blooms like once every seven years and it literally just overnight goes and just opens up at night. For the most part, things take time. Roses take a couple days to open up, right? I mean, things take time. That's just how it is. So we really need to try to back ourselves away from that whole process where we want things to happen significantly faster than they are. And really the last point I want to make is look back a year. Look back two years. Look at how far you've come. Look at all the things that have happened to you over the past year or two. How those, I mean, it's an insane amount of things have happened to us and it's taken time. It took two years. Could you have figured out a way to cram all those experiences into a month, into a week? Would it still have been awesome? Probably not, right? So again, allow yourself the experience. Allow yourself to go through this. It is not going to happen fast enough for you, most likely. 
it's just a mindset thing is all it is. But it will happen in the perfect timing, in the divine timing, in the right timing. It will happen exactly as it should. So the second we can try to at least get out of our way on the timing thing and stop being impatient and stop being angry that it's not happening fast enough, and that includes getting a text message back, if we can learn to be a little more patient, if we can learn to allow things to unfold, and if we can stop putting all this negative energy out there that it's not happening fast enough, that this isn't occurring, I'm angry that this hasn't happened quick enough. The second we can stop all of that, you speed up the process immensely, and you feel better most of the time. Hugely helpful. I hope you guys dig. I hope you like Going out with a great Billy Idol song. I don't really know if it's appropriate necessarily to the video I'm doing, but I went searching for uh, Billy Idol songs <laughs> to see if I could find one that seemed appropriate for the topic. And then I found this song. And I'm like, oh my God, I haven't heard this song in forever. And so I had to play it uh, because I just love the song and it goes back to, I don't know, when I was younger. So the song's called To Be a Lover by Billy Idol. Stan Radio Style. When the 